power. You've taken us down uh, history's lane, t told us the origin of what we today would look at as AU and summer basketball, where it all started, how people started to put together great teams. You brought up a wealth of, of knowledge about great high school players uh, as they started their de early development in high school. At what point did you decide that building strong summer basketball teams was not enough for you and that you were going to tr uh, also take on the responsibility of creating the first bas high school basketball national publication magazine in the history of, of the game? And it was called High School Basketball Illustrated. And this is the copy of the original magazine. And, and if one were to look closely, this is at that time, Lou Alcindor, who subsequently became Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. That's a picture of Alcindor at Power Memorial High School in New York. This magazine was charged 50 cents and it was the number one publication of high school sports in America a must-have if you followed high school basketball. Howard, what put you, uh, when I say innovator, I called you an innovator in the very beginning. And this is a classic example of you. You were the, the Steve Jobs of high school basketball back in those days. What drove you to put this publication together? Insanity. <laughs> okay. Well, it's probably what, what drove Sorry. Steve Jobs to the iPhone. Uh, uh, insanity. I like to write. I like to write. I was a decent writer. Probably still am decent. And uh, there was a college yearbook today. It's uh, Dell and all of those. But there was a college book then. Um, it was college, that, high school basketball book? Uh, no, no, it was, uh, uh, college. Uh, yeah, college, just college. Yes. Preseason. You know, there's like yes. 10 of them out today. Yes. And, yes, yes. And, but the best one was Dell, Dell mm -hmm. Magazine. And they had a, a great format. Um, and I copied the, I just said, let's, let me try a high school. There's never been a high school magazine on the New York area. We'll cover, we'll just cover the uh, New York a metropolitan area, North Jersey, Long Island, Staten Island, the five boroughs. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll put this together and let's see what happens. And I had a very dear friend of mine on the Journal American by the name of Maury Rokic, uh, who was the head high school writer there. And he loved the idea. So it was him and me. And we, we worked for about a year in advance. And we got all the information, all the stats. And uh, we, we put this together, and um, we thought it would be a huge seller, and it wasn't. Uh, people loved it, but it wasn't. It didn't sell much, so that was the end of it. We put, only did it one year. Uh, a gentleman by the name of Gene Chichura was the uh, publisher, and I remember he told me he threw 16,000 copies in the Hudson River. Uh, unsold boxes of stuff that were never sold. But I think it's a classic magazine and it's got, uh, you know, that year's stuff. All, it's all in there, everything you want to know. Yeah, and that now, year was 1964. 1964. Now, I'm riding one day up to a game with a dear, dear friend of mine named Paul Brandenburg. Mm -hmm. Now, Paul Brandenburg was a player for NC State. I didn't tell you, I haven't told you yet about it. We haven't gone into my NC State days. You haven't asked me about it. But we'll get to uh, that. We may get to that. Uh, but Paul Brandenburg was um, was uh, a good player for every case at NC State. And he had graduated. He's now the assistant coach of the Citadel. And, and we're driving up to a game, and he's got the magazine. And... Uh, I see he's looking through it, and he's got names, all these names here. Like, this is a typical page. Mm -hmm. This is a page with every high school in the area. 
and uh, all the names of the top players from that from each school is on there. So he's got a red, I'll never forget, a red pen circled maybe 50 names on each page, or 20 names on each page, let's say, or circled. And I said, Paul, what, what's the circle? What's that all about? He says, don't you know? I said, no. What is it? He said, this is the greatest recruiting tool that I've ever seen. It's, this is unbelievable. you got every player in the metropolitan area. And it's a great, you should do a service. I said, what's a service? And he tells me about what a service would be. A, sc a, re a scouting service. A scouting service for mm -hmm. high school. And you should do it. And that's how things start with me. I mean, no plan, just, I saw it. Not a bad idea, so I looked into it, and there were no, there was only one service, Dave Bones, and he didn't cover the New York area that much. No, he mostly uh, the Midwest. Dave Bones was out yeah. in Toledo, Ohio. Correct, correct. So, so uh, I, uh, I did it. I started HSBI report from high school best. We call it H S B I report, and. Um, I went and I went and did it uh, again. Insanity, I suppose. But uh, only this time it worked out. When this been, fairly this well, been about 1965, Mark. 1965, I started it, and um, trying to think uh, how many schools. The first year we sent out, you know, stuff to every school in the in the uh, area, uh, every college in the country, and. And we got about 20 responses the first, right away. I think it was $50 a pop. And that covered some expense money. And anyway, it wasn't too, it was, it, it must have gone pretty good because uh, the enrollment doubled every year. And uh, I did it for 20 years. And uh, it was a living. It wasn't, I didn't get rich, but it was a living. And it was doing something that I enjoyed and, and it helped a lot of kids get into college. And, and uh, people, college coaches respected the opinions. I started the STAR system. That was the... Uh, Tell us about the STAR system. STAR system. Well, um, uh, that's the, the camp. The camp, Five Star, came from the STAR system. Uh, we decided to rate the players. Uh, see, in those days, there were only uh, there were no there was no mid major, high major. I started that, but I get to that. There was uh, play was either major college they called them major college or small small college. small. College. That was it. There was no breakdown. Mm -hmm. You were either a major college or you weren't. And I thought there were more levels than that, so I. I invented the five levels, and we start them. And small college was one star. Uh, top small college was a two star. Low major, I invented the term low major was was a three star. That would be you know some of the some of the weaker teams in the big conferences. Mm -hmm. uh, mid major would be four stars, and if you were a great big time. Big time play, you got five stars, you were called big time. Mm -hmm. And I did that for, for two or three years, and then I, and then we, we went even deeper, and we put pluses and minuses on each of them. So actually we had like 10, 10, 10 levels. So a kid Five be, plus uh, was a superstar, yeah. five was a big time, five plus minus was be. big time potential. Mm -hmm. Had potential. And, uh, this is how it worked for many, many years. Twenty years I did this, and uh, we've, we've got a lot of colleges, a lot of schools from all over the country. Mm -hmm. What and differentiated you from Dave Bones was that Dave basically put out a report that uh, talked, uh, identified the prospect, where he went to school, and some of his statistical information. But you took it a step further, did the same thing. But yet you, you gave the, uh, the college assistants and head coaches your opinion as to 
based on their skill level where they would best fit in at college. What what prompted you to do that, Gar? Well, again, they had uh, when I dis when I broke down the levels from from just major college, small or major college, small college. Uh, I had to have a way to to uh, go with the low major, mid major, big time. And, uh, there were three levels of major college, uh, talent-wise. Um, let's say uh, John Wall. If John Wall was playing then, yeah, you could watch the Wizards. He's a superstar, so he would get a five plus. He's major college, mm -hmm. big time major college. Mm -hmm. um, take another guard. Uh, I don't want to mention any names, but uh, someone that could play, let's say, for. Uh, Bucknell or Miami. no, not Bucknell. Miami. Actually, uh, let's take uh, Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech's guards. If you look at them now, they they're major college, but they're not they're not fives. They're not big time. They're low to mid major players. Mm -hmm. So I broke down the uh, levels, the five levels, and uh, it could, took a lot of time to you know, and, and took a lot of work. You had to see the kid more than one time to. to put him in the level like that. But I thought, I batted about 80%. I thought if I batted 80%, that was a very, very good uh, hitting average, which is about what we did over 20, 25 year period. And there was a time along the way where I took a partner in, Tom Kachowski. Uh, Tom Kachowski is now the, the editor and publisher of, HS, of HSBI Report. When I sold it to him, is a long story with the NCAA and all that. We'll get into that. Um, and, and so he was very helpful, extremely helpful uh, to me uh, in the last five years of uh, owning outright HSBI report. So HSBI started in 1964 and it still exists today. Yeah. Incredible. HSBI report, absolutely. Yes. Tom Kinchowski. Now, when he, Tom being, being uh, the person that he is, when he bought the service, I sold him my my part of the service. I had made him my partner, and then I sold him my half. Uh, he never changed the name. He kept the name the same. Out of you know, I don't know why he didn't change it to Kinchowski's. Could have called it Kinchowski's report. He didn't. Kept it the same over the years. And still, uh, it's not only going, it's better than ever. He, he does, a, does a fantastic job. Uh, and we didn't cover the whole country. We covered, uh, the service covered Maine through West Virginia. Because mm -hmm. we thought it was, it was uh, too much to go beyond that and still be relevant. And so still it was, be creditable. It was Maine, yeah. It was Maine, uh, Maine through West Virginia, which was the east. But, but there came a time when we had special reports, and there was a gentleman by the name of Bob Lapidus. I know Bob very well. Bob Lapidus was a writer for, uh, for several uh, postseason magazines. Great guy. Mm -hmm. Helped at the high school on Murphy. And he had newspapers. He would have, uh, he, had, he had stacks of newspapers. Uh, which he collected from all over the country, go down to Forty Second Street. Because he was in the jewelry business. In the jewelry business, yes. but he was a basketball nut, and uh, so he had all these newspapers. And Bob Knight, Bob Knight was uh, the coaching now at Indiana, and also at West Point. Well, he started at West, West Point. Point. Yeah, then in Indiana, and Bob Knight and 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 Bob Lapidus became friends through me. And uh, Bob Knight would go to Bob Lapidus' house, and there were, I'm telling you, there were stacks of newspapers, 10 piles of newspapers up to the ceiling. And Bob Knight went there with his assistant, coach each year, whoever it was, and uh, spent three nights in New York going through newspapers to get every name he could out of, the news, out of Bob Lapidus' newspapers. So I said, why not throw in uh, a special edition of the Midwest? So we had a extra editions, 
uh, each year in HSBI of the uh, Midwest. We covered Ohio, Indiana, and Illinois, those three states. And, and Coach Knight gave me all the names and the ratings of each player, and then we put them in service. So that added to the, to the uh, service. Up yeah. until this point, your memory's been impeccable. But what you don't remember is you were the one who introduced me to Bob Lapidus when I was assistant at Villanova. And I used to trek up there about twice a month to Bob's apartment and sit there and go through, go through the names. You were the one that introduced me That's to him. Right. We, right. we said one night you, we all went to the deli and had some coffee and cheesecake and and, and God bless him, Bob's daughter, uh, 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 Bob's wife, Sophie. Sophie. And I ended up helping his daughter get into the University of Maryland. But I would sit up there to 1, 2 o'clock in the morning going through these newspapers. I had these long yellow, you remember, the long yellow uh, uh, legal sheets. And I'd write down the kid's name and his height and his high school and, and that. And then subsequently, Bob, when Bob was assistant at West Point, then when he became the head coach, he, he too uh, nurtured a friendship with Bob Lapidus and then there were many times when Bob and I together were over there to two or three o'clock in the night getting the names out of the newspapers. Newspapers. Yeah, you know, when you start, if I started some of this stuff, you started the whole recruiting stuff with your, with your yellow pads and people would look at it and say, what's that? You had every name of every player in America on there.